Hello, this is Vicki Ryder, librarian at the Arizona Talking Book Library, and this is an episode of Conversations with Authors. Today I'm excited to chat with Michael Hale, author of Bad Monkey Business. Michael Hale has written, designed, and illustrated ad campaigns for print, radio, and television. He was the creative director for the Phoenix Zoo, and he's also designed everything from parade floats and museum exhibits to playgrounds and holiday light shows. Now he's using his creativity to write and illustrate children's books. I'm so happy to have you here today, Michael. It's great to be here. Thank you. So as your bio indicates, you've worked creatively in all different areas. How did you come to do picture books? I like to think that it was the path that I was meant to take. Starting off in different aspects of design and doing creative work, I just found that most of the things that I wound up working on during my career became more and more child-centric after a while. So it seemed a natural path to want to write and illustrate books. And I think it also came with a lot of coaxing from my wife saying, this is something that I think you'd be good at. And do you have children? I have two. Oh, that's great. So have you always been sort of enamored with children's books? Oh, yeah. I still have the ones that I had as a kid. I kept all of my children's books and just always loved the art, loved the storytelling. I just thought it was a great way to combine the two. That's terrific. And so what gave you the idea for this book, Bad Monkey Business? Really combining a lot of things. One, working at the zoo for so many years. Just thought that monkeys were a great subject matter. I loved Curious George as a kid. And I've always loved rhyming books, just in particular. Dr. Seuss was always one of my favorites as well. Just loved the the quality of a good rhyming book. For instance, with my children, I read Dr. Seuss's alphabet to them so many times that like the whole thing is stuck in my head. So you can give me any letter in the Dr. Seuss alphabet in any order, and I'll tell you exactly what it is anytime. Okay, so what is X? X? X is very useful if your name is Nixie Knox. It also comes in handy spelling X and extra fox. Yep, he's definitely a Dr. Seuss (laughs) expert. (laughs) Some of our younger listeners out there might wonder, do you have a pet monkey? No, I was never allowed to have one. I did always want one as a kid, but they would never let me have one. Oh. And it was one of those where I think as I got older and learned more about monkeys, realized that it was, wouldn't be a good idea to have a monkey as a pet. They don't make good pets. Did you have other pets? Had a, a lot of dogs. Uh, growing up as uh, kids here in Arizona, we were always catching a lot of Un- unauthorized pets and keeping those. We had snakes, we had lizards, we had uh, all sorts of mice and critters and other little things that we could keep. We always had a dog, which was the one acceptable pet that my mom would have, right. but most of them she never knew about until it was too late. Oh, goodness. <laughs> I bet you were a a very feisty child. (laughs) Well, I had help. Came from a big family, so there were a lot of us. And it's easier to keep secrets when you have several children all working together. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. And so when you worked at the Phoenix Zoo, did you have a favorite animal? Most people are always surprised that my favorite animal when I worked there was a minor bird. It was a talking minor bird. I worked a lot with the keeper who took care of it every day. And uh, she told me the cues to get the minor bird to talk. And so he was pretty funny because he would say things to you, because if you went up and you said, pretty bird, he would correct you and say, minor bird. (laughs) And if you said, minor bird, he would say, pretty bird. (laughs) Oh, that's so cute. Must be a fun place to work. Oh, yeah, it was. And getting to know them, you know, getting to see them up close and just people's relationships with animals and how they like to be around them. It was a special place to work. Well, that's great. Well, without giving much away, what is Bad Monkey Business about? Bad Monkey Business is about a woman who unwittingly lets a monkey into her house, and he starts filling it up with animals, and she has no idea why. We like to think that it's a story about understanding things from both sides. And it's a great story. So are you working on anything new right now? Yeah, actually, just finished a holiday book called The Candy Cane Princess that just came out. I have another book that will be coming out in January that I illustrated called Panda Proud. And then hopefully there's about two or more that are in the works that I can't really talk about yet until something happens with them. But hopefully you'll see more to come. Oh, that's great. So you sometimes strictly do the illustrations and someone else writes them. Correct. Bad Monkey Business. Is that the first book you wrote yourself? Correct. So you're working on any other ones that you're writing yourself? Oh, yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. The two or three that I'm working on now are ones that I've written and illustrated. Oh, great. It's probably really rewarding to illustrate your own story. What is it like to illustrate someone else's story? It can be very challenging, and it can be a lot of fun. For me, when I write a story, I've always got the pictures in my head. So it's easy for me to come back and do that. And 
when you get an opportunity, what's interesting is the process doesn't really work the way most people think it does. They think that, you know, maybe we sit down with the author and have nice chats and talk about their vision for the book, but it doesn't. Most of the time in traditional publishing, you get a manuscript, and it is the straight manuscript, and they don't give you any preconceived notions. So it's fun because you get to kind of tell your own story within the pictures, and sometimes it can take a completely different direction than the author may have taken. It can be interesting. The first book that I illustrated, Up, 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 which is a concept book for very young children, had a very sparse word count. I mean, very little, saying mouse climbs in, squeak, 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 up, up, up. And it goes on like that with different animals. And when I asked the publisher, I said, well, where are they going? <laughs> it's going up, but how is it going up? What is it going up? And they're like, we want to know what you think. Oh, goodness. So it was fun. Like I got to tell the story within a story. That's really great. Is it always that way? Or does the author ever get approvals where they say, no, I don't want it to go in that direction? Or... Are there various ways that that can happen? There are various ways, and I've heard it happen in different ways. Most of the time when a publisher brings together an author and an illustrator, they've brought them in because they see different good qualities in both of them, and they think that in putting them together that they're going to create a magic that is going to make a better product for them. So sometimes, depending on how well established the author may be, if they have notes or specific things that they want to see in the book, especially if they are a very successful, long-standing author, they may get more notes that get passed on to the illustrator to say, well, we want to see it happen this way or this way. Yeah, that makes sense. So I saw you do a reading of Bad Monkey Business at Changing Hands. And I think, don't you go to schools and bookstores to do story times and things like that around the valley? And Yeah, I do. Actually, been all over the state through different independent bookstores and schools. It's a lot of fun. It's nice with the illustration part of it. I can go to schools and I can talk to, the, you know, preschools and read the book to them and go to kindergartners, first graders, second graders. And then when we start getting into third graders and about where they've pretty much transitioned out of picture books, then we can talk about writing stories and just saying, oh. you know, the importance of story structure and character development, things like that. And even I will go and speak to high schools and talk to them about the art side of things where we're just saying this is what it takes to create a picture book from start to finish. And so I'll talk to art students in high schools and things like that. Oh, and even terrific. sometimes college students. But what I find is very interesting is even when I'm talking to 16, 17, 18 year olds, at the end of my art presentation, I'll say, well, who wants to read the story? And they're like, read it to us. Because, <laughs> I mean, everybody likes being read picture books. And it's funny even reading to a high schooler who you think would be pretty cynical when you get the, oh, at the end is always fun. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That's wonderful. Well, thank you for coming in and talking with us today. Well, thank you so much for having me. It's been I really a appreciate it. And uh, a reminder to our patrons, Michael Hale's book, Bad Monkey Business, is available through our Talking Book Library, both by mail and on our bar download service. It's book DBC 15348. So ask your reader advisor or check it out. And thank you all for listening. <laughs>